All right, good morning, and welcome to Caldwell Community College Technical Institute, the uh, ribbon cutting for our furniture factory lab. My name is Jeff Link. I'm Dean of Career and Technical Education here at Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute. Uh, before we begin, I want to remind you, Heather came around earlier. Uh, we do have a, a giveaway, a door prize that we're going to be giving away during lunch. It's a Echo Plus, but uh, you got to enter to win. Yeah. So uh, if you uh, want to come up uh, before lunch, after we do the ribbon cutting, uh, we have some blank cards up here. If you don't have your business card, if you do have a business card, you can drop it in or fill out one of our blank cards and drop it in there. And we will be doing that giveaway at lunchtime. So uh, certainly excited about that. And thank you to Electra and Heather for, for arranging that. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jerry Church. He's vice chairman of the Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute Board of Trustees for our official welcome. Good morning, and thank you for that, uh, that warm welcome. Not used to getting applause when I stand up to speak. Usually it's when I sit down. Uh, good morning, I want to welcome you to a very special day for Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute and our local furniture companies. For more than a century, the furniture industry has defined Caldwell County and this region, providing thousands of jobs and helping to build the communities we call home. Provided a job for me for over 30 years. Much has changed during that time and will continue to change with technology, globalization, and of course the consumer having great influence over future industry trends. Today we celebrate the college's response to those changes and the needs of our local furniture companies as we gather with key industry partners whose vision helped make this new furniture factory lab possible. This institute represents our collective efforts in merging tradition with progress as we turn the page to a new chapter in the future of furniture. Later, you'll see a classroom with the latest technology in a newly remodeled space that simulates what our students will see when they enter the workforce. Our goal is to prepare our students for the furniture jobs of today and tomorrow and provide our local furniture industry with workers who are well-trained and ready to go to work. Before we get started, I'd like to welcome a few special guests. From the Community College Board of Trustees, Tom Thuss and Alvin Daltrich. Just lift your hands. And... <laughs> Peg Broyhill, Chair of the CCC and TI Foundation. We have representatives from Lectra here today. Anyone from the furniture manufacturers, including founding partners from Bernhardt, Fairfield Chair, and McCrary Modern. If you work in the furniture industry, we recognize it. Caldwell County Commissioners. We have Deborah Murray, the Executive Director of the EDC. Caldwell County School Superintendent, Dr. Don Phipps. Board of Education members and Caldwell County School employees. We have the Honorable Mayor of Hudson, Janet Winkler, and Town of Hudson Council members. Any City of Lenore Council members present? Oh, yes, Ben. Uh, Bill McBrayer from the State Board of Community Colleges is with us today. Uh, Representative Ray Russell was going to try to make it today. I have not seen him today. Uh, Lenore News Topic is here, and any of the CCC and TI faculty and staff that are here today, welcome them. I'm going to turn it back over to the college's Dean of Career and Technical Education, Jeff Link, who will introduce our other speakers and later will lead the tour of the Furniture Factory Lab. Once again, on behalf of the Community College Board of Trustees, I thank you for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Church. Uh, if you would, please welcome Bill McLaughlin. Bill is the Editor-in-Chief of Furniture Today. Thank you. Welcome to the revolution. I don't know if you realize it, but when historians write the story of this era, this will be a revolution as big as the shift from horse-drawn carriages to cars, as big as the change from artisan production 
to factory production. There's one little difference though. It's happening incredibly fast, faster than ever before. Let me give you a little context. When the telephone was first introduced, you know that box that your millennials try to swipe on your, on your wall? It took 75 years for it to reach 50 million users. When the TV came along, it took 22 years for it to reach 50 million users. Facebook did that in three years. The, um, the augmented reality game, Pokemon Go, did it in 19 days. 19 days. Two years ago, nobody outside of the tech field even know, knew what AR, augmented reality, was. Today, it's going to become one of the biggest merchandising revolutions in the furniture industry. Two years. So the pace of change is happening incredibly fast. Faster than people can keep up with, and you're a key part of that. In addition, we have a new generation of consumers moving into their primary purchasing years. Millennials, the largest generation in history, are starting to set up their first homes. They're starting to shop, and you know where they're shopping, right? In 2010, 5% of consumers shop for furniture on their phone. Last year, that number was 59%. It's changing rapidly. And millennials have grown up being told that they are special. They are unique. They are the most individualistic generation in history, and they have, all have selfies of themselves to prove it. <laughs> There's a fundamental shift that they're, that they're making also in how they shop. We call it in our industry the Amazon effect. How many people have shopped on Amazon? I should have asked how many didn't, right? Amazon right now has 100 million Amazon Prime members. Population of the United States is about 350 million. So when you take out those who are too young and those who really don't go online, you're talking about pretty much half the country is an Amazon Prime member. That's a huge fundamental shift and it's having repercussions all throughout the furniture industry. Speed to market is now absolutely critical. Furniture manufacturers are being tasked to get product into the pipeline from the factory to the consumer's home in unprecedented amounts of time. So that puts enormous <coughs> pressure on the pipeline. At the same time, there is right now an enormous shortage of workers. In the trucking industry, in 2010, there was a shortage of 30,000 truckers. Today that shortage is 60,000. In two more years, there's gonna be a shortage of 100,000 truckers. We recently held a, a CEO roundtable at the High Point Market, sponsored by Lectra. We had some pretty significant players there. The combined sales of the companies represented exceeded $2 billion. We asked them what their biggest problems were. Number one, workers. They don't have them. Ashley Furniture Industries Chairman Ron Wanick has said the only way that we're going to get the next generation of workers is we're going to have to build them ourselves. A year and a half ago, I was part of a, a tour that they took here of this college and other community colleges in the area to look at mechatronics education because that is absolutely critical to the future of the furniture industry to attract new workers. They've invested $2 million in essentially a mobile technology lab not just because they, that students need access to technology, but because students need access to teachers and the teachers are not there. So in their community in Wisconsin, they've built this lab, they've equipped it with a teacher and it's going around to schools in the local area. I'll just share a quick little story with you. I was lucky enough to, uh, to be at a festival last year where it was on display and this one little eight year old boy walked in and I swear you would have thought he had seen Harry Potter. And he's walking around and he's looking at all these gadgets and these things and he's so excited. And I went up to him and I said, you know, this is going to come to your school. You would have thought I was Santa Claus. I mean, his eyes lit up. He was so excited. It was the, probably one of the most exciting moments of certainly my career. But this little boy was so excited and that's, that's the thing that we have to do is we have to reach down to that level. That's the thing that Ashley is doing. That's the kind of thing that this program is doing. That's the kind of thing that community colleges like Caldwell and the other schools here in the area are leading the country in is reaching out beyond the college level, getting students at the high school and middle school level when they're starting to make that first impression of where they're going to go. So this is a really terrific program. I thank you for inviting me to come up here. Um, you are the folks right here in this school 
who are going to guide the revolutionaries that are going to get us safely through this stage. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. The word that you're going to hear a lot today is partnership. And uh, we'd like to hear a word from our founding partners who have made the Furniture Factory Lab a reality. First, please welcome Mr. William Howard. He is the Vice President of Human Resources for Bernhardt Furniture. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Y'all may not remember what I say, but you're going to remember I'm the only speaker that without a coat or a tie on today. So you can at least remember me for that, I suppose. Uh, one more thing, we've got quite a contingent here from Bernhardt, and I appreciate them being here. But uh, in everybody's little packet, there's post-it notes from, from Bernhardt, and I'm asking our guys to turn them back in so we can get credit for them and <laughs> turn them back in. Get, we're focused on the bottom line a little bit. Um, I, I do appreciate those that know me like no I like to tell a joke every now and then um, Bill's comments were perfect because since I sat down at that distinguished table I got an email on my phone from a recruiter and the the subject line is Amazon Ecom specialist profile um, so Bill your comments are just right on target even those folks as old as I am are operating by my phone and we're hiring e-commerce people to to delve into that uh, reality which is today's furniture world uh, speaking with my 28 year old millennial son this morning at 9 30 he called me didn't text me call me um, over something that was kind of exciting and i heard chewing going on i said are you what are you doing are you at break or something he said no i'm eating a bowl of cereal i said you eating a bowl of cereal they got that at wells fargo in charlotte that's pretty nice so no i'm working from home today I said, okay, that's, that's good. That's, it must be nice. It must be nice. Um, several of us in the room were at a luncheon earlier uh, this week uh, that Blue Ridge Energy put on uh, of community leaders. And, and our speaker was an economist, uh, professor at Appalachian State University just up the road. And I always love to hear Dr. Her Davis speak about the economy. And he was giving statistics on U.S., North Carolina, Caldwell, uh, data points and I think we can all agree that all three facets Caldwell's economy is certainly doing much better than we were a decade or so ago under Deborah's leadership at the EDC and others Marks uh, Dr. Porch excuse me Dr. Porch at uh, Community College uh, and all of us in the room uh, are doing what we can to support and work hard for Caldwell's uh, economy but the North Carolina economy is growing the U.S. economy is growing, and quite frankly, despite all the Herculean efforts of those folks I mentioned, we're not gaining enough ground against North Carolina and the U.S. to be uh, a more attractive place to live and work tomorrow than we are today. This uh, is an indication of we're stepping up to the plate and we're up in our game. Uh, and I can't tell you how much Bernhardt is appreciative of the opportunity to be involved in something like this. And I know I speak for the family and every one of our employees when I say we are truly honored uh, to have a small part in this and we look forward to being uh, a good partner and being involved in this furniture lab going forward. And we can't thank everyone involved enough uh, for, for doing this, for not only those of us in this room, but this whole community. This is a gift that Lecter's provided for us with the automated cutting machine. What a wonderful partner they are. Uh, this is truly a gift to the entire community and I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Next we have Dixon Mitchell, President of Fairfield Chair. Thank you, um, Thank you for having us here. It's as one of the founding partners, first off, I'd like to thank Bernhardt, McCrary Modern, Community College, Bill, all the support, the local community, because this, it, it, just to not reiterate what everyone said, but as Bill said, people shop differently, right? They shop differently, they're online. Well, attracting that millennial worker today, that takes a different attitude. I mean, Bill, I mean, you're in the HR business, right? And, and it, it, it's very challenging. So when I look at this, I mean, what's gonna sell a young person wanting to invest into a, a furniture industry and invest in this community? It's, 
it is more about technology and cool and designing the factory of the future. If you look at the industry, as everybody said, we're in the next decade, we'll have the United States will have two million manufacturing jobs that we can't fulfill. Two million jobs. Ten years ago, we all thought manufacturing was gone, right? Unemployment was in 2009, we thought what was unemployment, 15, 20 percent. Now we're at 3.67, however you look. So our, our ability to train and hire skilled labor force is huge, let alone the other issues that we have with global competition. We have, you know, a com very complex supply chain. We have a customer that wants it now, immediately, as, as Bill was talking about. I can summon a cab with my phone in two minutes, right? But it still takes me too long to get a sofa or a piece of furniture. So I think that's the juxtaposition that we have to think through with how we see the future. I mean, what is so wonderful about this educational idea is it's investing in technology, not just in manufacturing. I mean, it's a blend and a balance. If you look at, you know, what, it, what are we gonna look like in the future? It's how do you get the workforce to be engaged? This is a laboratory and laboratories are engaging. That means you're teaching people with simulated modeling. You're teaching them with uh, workforce assessment. It's on the job training, which is really what I see as a landing spot and a stepping stone to work for one of these great founding partners here. Um, in the next decade, we see manufacturing is American manufacturing should grow 30 percent I mean that that's huge and we you know a lot of us have talked about you know we, some of us outsource things like that but what this program does is it closes that gap right I mean how do we use you know we're really training highly trained professionals and skilled engineers um, I was talking to Rick coffee um, it's not just about hiring upholsterers sewers and cutters coming out of this We've got many managers in this room that are came out of the community college workforce. I mean, I've got several that, that again, they came, learned a skill, learned a trade, but then they did continuing education and went forward. So as my uncle used to always say, he said, you know, look as far as you can see, and when you get there, keep looking. So I think, again, this is so exciting to just be the beginning of something great that we continue to invest in the community and invest in our, invest in our industry. So it's very exciting for us, for those folks at Fairfield. So thank you. Appreciate your support. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Please welcome Mr. Rick Coffey, President of McCrary Modern. I still use legal paper, <laughs> and I can I can write on it faster than I can type, so it works for me. Good morning. Good morning. You know, and, and it is a good morning, isn't it? What a wonderful uh, opportunity uh, we have today. I'd like to personally thank Dr. Porch and uh, the staff and administration of CCC and TI and the member companies uh, for having the vision, the foresight, and the uh, tenacity. Uh, required in making the Furniture Factory Lab a reality. Uh, one of the key objectives at McCray Modern has been to change the perception and mindset of what a furniture career is, especially in this area. Over the years, we've hosted multiple tours uh, for our local educators, career planners uh, to share, and we shared the excellent benefits, uh, that we have, what a career can mean in the furniture industry by obtaining a skill set in the upholstery industry. Especially when compared to other industries, our future looks brighter than most. The skills that this laboratory will provide will give uh, people an opportunity to have a lifetime of employment with these member companies. I don't know, know of any technology job that you can say that will provide that. And so when you look at longevity, uh, I sometimes like to use an old cliche, today's furniture industry isn't your father or mother's Oldsmobile, okay? It's, it's or business. Uh, you know, the, the facilities uh, of the member companies here, you know, they're clean. Ours are LED lighted, they're air conditioned. 
operations with state-of-the-art equipment. For instance, uh, one of the member, Lectra, uh, I've been with Lectra and have been involved, been to Bordeaux multiple times, uh, bought the very first reciprocating knife cutter in the United States. It was called a 97.3. That takes you back, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. So from there to today, we have 14 automated electric cutters. None of them are over three years old. And we've been using automated cutting for over 20 years. So you can see the investment that McCreary Modern's making, not only in technology, but hopefully the development and the mo of equipment and uh, machinery, 3D technology. Uh, and we've got you know, what I consider motivated employee owners. Yes, I said employee owners. 10 years ago, McCreary Modern is an ESOP company, became an ESOP company, and 30% of McCreary Modern is owned by the employees, it was gifted to them. And we refer to them as our family. The average ESOP account is now worth over $68,000 to every single employee that participates. That's 743 people, you can do the math. Furthermore, our benefits, and I'm sure the member, other member companies, we compare notes, are outstanding when compared to any industry. And this is really an unknown fact. You know, besides us being an ESOP company, we have a fantastic 401k plan. We offer 25% match on every dollar, no limit. So I always compare when I was taking through some of the uh, educators and I showed them this huge machine, uh, sewing machine dispatch conveyor and system that we have, have almost 100 sewers working in there. And I bring all these uh, career planners in, had about 25 of them, I'm standing there in front of them and I say, you see all these ladies out here? I wish I had some guy sewers too. I said, they all make more money than you and they have no college debt. And that's the reality. And I said, they have better benefits than you. And this is the secret that we're, we have been keeping, we need to share. This is how we can recruit people to the lab, letting them know that they could have a fantastic career in the furniture industry. You know, other benefits we offer is incredibly uh, reasonable health insurance. Uh, for over 20 years, we've had nurse practitioner that works in our, in our operation. Over 20 years, we had the foresight. So we supply free flu shots and mammograms. Uh, we offer teledoc telemedicine now, so they can, on the weekends. Gotta realize over half, in many cases, half of some of our operations are single parent families. They cannot afford to miss work to go get a mammogram. Think about it, six, eight hours. You can't do that. So we bring the trucks right to the factory free, along with free Wi-Fi blood monitors. So yeah, we utilize the technology and, and allow it to, to have a lifetime of hopefully good health and productive health in our organization. Last but not least, I'd like to commend you know, all the founding partners here uh, and the culture of giving back to the community that all of these companies represent. You can see the positive impact that Bernhardt and Fairfield and Lectra and McCrary Modern have had on this community. On, not only the community, but beyond the community. And thanks, I want to really thank everybody for the hard work and dedication and effort this training facility will uh, have in what I create, call creating new stockholders in McCurry Modern and in the other member companies. So thank you so much and congratulations to this wonderful uh, venture that we're getting ready to cut the ribbon on. Have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Coffey. Our newest partner in our furniture factory lab is Lectra, and I've uh, gotten to know these folks over the last year, and, and certainly we have good relationships and strong relationships with the partners you just heard from, but Lectra has really stepped up to the plate, and you'll see throughout our furniture factory lab the word powered by Lectra, and, and they're the powering and the driving force behind the furniture factory lab. So at this time, I'd like to welcome Mr. Edward McCann, who is the president of Lectra Americas. Good morning. Um, I'm working on my English, so you may not understand everything I'm going to tell you. That's not true. Lecture has been in the U.S. 40 years? 40 years. So 
I guess we've been part of this community uh, all this time, you know, part of your success, part of your moments, I guess. I was in the US first uh, as a lecturer employee 30 years ago. And uh, I spent three years here and I remember looking at you guys and saying, what is those guys are talking about? Bo and skew, what is that? How are we going to turn that into technology? And I can tell you that, uh, name it with Fairfield, Macquarie, with all, with all of you guys, we've been working hard to make this happen. And I guess what we, this partnership is about that, you know, it's about, you know, continuing this, this work that we've been doing together. I can also say that in 1990 something, the industry was completely different. We know that. And this industry, you said it uh, very well, uh, it changes fast, perhaps too fast. We, we, it's, it's almost too fast. Let's, let's, let's be realistic. Eh? We have a hard time to keep up. Eh? So, so that's the reason why I think the partnership, there's an interesting partnership between the industry, the education, and the technology. Uh, I think it's a very, very interesting partnership. One, because the industry, the furniture industry, this is one I love. It's one of our main industries at Lectra. It's one I really like. And there is a reason for that. This is that it, it does, it is, a, it is an industry that needs to be close to the consumer. And you talk about the, the millennials. We have to remember the millennials that were born in 2000. Uh, uh, Between 1980 and 2000. 1980. Yeah. They're, they're not so young anymore. 1980, they are like 39, right? So, <laughs> hey, they have kids, they have a family, they have a job, they have a house, a mortgage, everything you, 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 you can imagine of having, you know? So they are the big consumers, you said it. And those consumers, they want a personalized product, they want it fast. They may not be the people who will, will have uh, uh, a sofa for 20 years. Maybe they want to change more. And that's a great opportunity for us here because, because the, the capacity to deliver fast and to be close to the consumers is a capacity that no other country can have except the US. And we see this happening everywhere. So that's the good news for many countries. I see that happening in Europe too where uh, uh, it is very important to have close to the customer kind of activity. So that's interesting because this is where technology can help. I mean, uh, it's clear. Uh, uh, we've done that for the last 40 years. And, you know, at Lectra, we spend 10% of our revenue in, in R&D. It's basically, it's $30 million, 300 people every year working on R&D to make this happen. Uh, uh, and education is the third point because, yes, uh, we, we talked about it. There is shortage in labor. There is the need for technology. There is new jobs uh, that needs to be created. We need to, we need to work on that. We need to train the, the, the new professional. They are, the, they are very important. And I think there is something that is more important than the technology or anything else is the passion. We need to have young people that are passionate about furniture, passionate about what they do, they're really passionate. And I think this kind of partnership is, I would say that the, one of the, the, the goal of such partnership is to, to create this passion. It's, it's, it's important. And I, and, and I like this kind of a, a initiative here because hopefully it creates passion again here uh, and, and in this industry, and this is very important. But there's one thing that we need to, to be also uh, very aware is, is that, yes, we can have a, 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 the latest and greatest technology in, in, in cutting machine. But is that enough? Probably not. We probably need to put the bar higher. Uh, uh, augmented reality, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, name it. You know, Internet of Things, connection of all the systems in a company. This is not just the future, it's now. It's happening now. And it's not, it's not just, uh, it's, it's a threat also to say that it is happening everywhere, in every country, in China, in wh wherever you want. This is really happening. So we need to put the bar also very high in terms of educating 
uh, our uh, the next generation of professionals, so they are fully trained and fully passionate about the technology, and, it, and then it creates also a competitive advantage for the, 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 the industry uh, uh, in the US, for the furniture industry in the US. I like the idea of lab, because for me, the idea of a lab is it's not something that is stop in time. It's something that we want to evolve, that is something where we want to share ideas, and we will, uh, certainly. We will also be presenting uh, very soon at the HFMSC, very hard to pronounce for me, uh, 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 some new technologies where we are now launching platforms. So basically, you have orders coming, they are in a platform, and you have job uh, launched directly to the cutting machines, every, everything else. So we are, we are really thinking to the, to the next steps. And, and hopefully, uh, it will be with your influence because I can tell you the influence of this region uh, uh, into Lectra has been tremendous. Like I said, 25 plus years ago, I was, we were still trying to understand how you, were, you, you, you would do your business. We have learned with you. And we want to continue learning with you. So that's, I would say, part of this partnership. And this is certainly uh, the idea behind the idea behind the lab. At least this is the idea we have around the concept uh, of this lab. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. McCon. It's now my honor and privilege to welcome to the podium the president of Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute, Dr. Mark Porch. Thank you, Jeff. Isn't he a good MC? I thank you, Mr. Scollin. Um, good morning, everybody. It is indeed my honor and pleasure to be with you, and I stand here before you proud as punch, I guess. Um, uh, I'm full of pride this morning with what uh, we're going to see, and uh, for me, this is the ultimate uh, relationship, Deborah, the ultimate collaboration between business, industry, and education, and uh, it makes me very proud to be a part of it. And I want to tell you a little bit of a story and give you a little bit of a uh, background on why today is so monumental. This idea started a little over two years ago. It's hard to believe it's uh, been that long. In March of 2017, I met a lady named Mary O'Keefe. Many of you know her. And she came into my office and we sat down and we started talking about the needs of our local furniture industry and what we were doing at Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute to kind of serve their needs. And quite frankly, I was a little bit embarrassed, uh, you know, when uh, we lost $10,000, uh, $10,000, lost a lot more than that, didn't we? Uh, we lost 10,000 jobs um, to that industry. Uh, basically, the need to train workers kind of went away. And so our labs went downhill. Uh, we still had what you will see behind me. We had the upholstery side of the lab, uh, but it wasn't much. Everything was just kind of pushed in a corner and there really wasn't any classes uh, going on. So Mary and I talked about that. We talked about the vision for the program. We talked about the needs of our employers. And at that time, I was starting to hear from people to my left and many of you out here, you know, that they needed trained workers. They needed cutters. They needed sewers. They needed upholsters. And uh, I knew that we weren't producing what they needed in part because of our facility and in part because of our equipment um, and in part because there wasn't a talent pipeline. There wasn't anybody interested in doing that job anymore. So we, we knew that we had a lot of work to do. Uh, and so when Mary and I uh, kind of finished that conversation and she left, she said that she had some ideas and that she would be back in touch. Little did I know that her ideas involved Lectra. Um, and then shortly after that, the next month in April, uh, my good friend Bill McBrayer, who's here today, thank you, sir, for, for being here and for your influence on, on this. He invited me to go with him to Hickory to see the Furniture Academy in, uh, that's part of Catawba Valley Community Colleges program. And those of you who know me know I'm pretty competitive. And I don't want to be outdone, uh, even by my good friend, Dr. Henshaw at Catawba Valley Community College. But I kind of knew in the back of my mind that, you know, our employers deserve more than we were giving them. 
and you know I did not want uh, Fairfield and Bernhardt and McCrary Modern or anybody else in Caldwell County thinking that they had to go outside of Caldwell County to get trained. Uh, but I was very impressed by what I saw at the uh, Furniture Academy in Hickory. And as part of that visit, I brought Mr. McBrayer down and I showed him what you're gonna see here, here in just a few minutes. He looked at me and said, I don't know if you remember this, but he said, wow, he wouldn't even walk in. He said, wow, he said, Dr. Porch, you've got some challenges. And I said, I know. And I said, I'm not really bringing you down here for you to give me sympathy, although I'll take it. But we had a lot, we, you know, everybody who was kind of involved in that initial discussion knew what kind of challenges we had before us. Uh, Bill knew it when he saw it. Uh, and I don't think you've been back in this uh, facility uh, since that time. Mary was certainly aware of the challenge that, that we had. And again, we, we had uh, the upholstery side, but what you saw when you walked in there was glue all over the floor, holes in the wall, things kind of pushed over to the side, just a big mess really, quite honestly. And on the other side that you're gonna see, which is now the cutting and sewing side, we had a plumbing lab in this big monster structure, wooden structure. We had a bathroom, mock bathroom in there for our plumbing classes. And then on the other end, Dr. Phipps and Chairman Pennell, we had a makeshift classroom for our middle college students where they taught history. So those students were in, in my opinion, a less than adequate academic setting. And our plumbing lab uh, at that time was basically not being utilized because the need for construction workers at that time was uh, kind of non-existent. Since we've, um, Part of that renovation, we tore the plumbing lab down, and about three weeks after that, I got a phone call saying, when are you gonna produce some plumbers? <laughs> so now we're looking for a place to, uh, to kind of build a, a, a plumbing lab. Um, but I knew, again, when we went down and we took a look at the uh, Furniture Academy in, in Hickory, I knew that you know, that was a good thing to try to emulate to the extent that we could. We knew we didn't have a, a building like they do completely dedicated to furniture. But we did know that we had some space that we could um, kind of utilize and try to make the best of. So in, also in April of 2017, I'm having to refer to my notes because I don't, I don't want to leave anything out. Mary came back to me, and at that time she came back with David uh, folks from, from Lecter, and David's here today. And that was the first time that I had any inkling that Lecter wanted to be a partner in this thing. And so, needless to say, I was ecstatic about the, uh, the possibility of them donating uh, the latest and greatest technology uh, to, to this effort. Um, I also found out that they were in France, so that uh, if you think things in the United States take a long time, you know, if you're dealing with another country, sometimes they take even longer. So we knew that we were, uh, you know, still up against some challenges. The next step in the process was we pulled in our founding partners. We pulled in Bernhardt Furniture, we pulled in Fairfield Chair, and we pulled in McCreary Modern. And they stood in what you're gonna see this morning, and I think they had the same reaction. They said, man, you got some challenges. But what we wanted them to do was help design the space. And so that's what we did. And they, they helped us understand the layout of that room. Uh, we, had, we now had two rooms that we were going to utilize, and we were trying to simulate, if you will, again, a furniture factory and what students will actually see once they leave the program and they go out there into the workforce. So they helped us understand, well, you probably ought to put the cutting machine here. You probably ought to have the sew sewing machines over here. You probably ought to, on your upholstery side, you could arrange things a little bit different to make that flow work better. Probably ought to try to do something to the floors to make it look a little nicer. And you probably ought to cut a hole an opening in between the two rooms to allow access between those two rooms to kind of simulate what they're going to see in a furniture lab so they don't have to go out into the hallway and then go back in the other side. So that's what we did. So we started tearing out the plumbing lab. We were able to move the uh, middle college students into more of an academic setting so it was more appropriate for a history class than a, than a lab setting. And um, now what you're going to see when you walk in there is very uh, very much say the art. We took out the old tile floor. It now has a nice epoxy floor. The walls have been painted. There's two offices in there that now have new carpet and new paint and uh, new computers and things of that nature. The fabric 
is stacked on racks and not laying in the floor. You know, everything looks nice and uh, we hope it stays that way. But we also know that, you know, we're in the business of training the next generation of furniture workers. So there's gonna be a lot of work happening in that lab and we're really, really excited about it. Um, so, you know, once, and, and then uh, let me back up also just uh, a second. Then we got confirmation, you know, that Lecter's coming through and Lecter is gonna provide us with a state-of-the-art uh, cutting machine. And we didn't have anything with, uh, to cut upholstery with other than scissors at that point in time. So uh, that was kind of the game changer. Uh, but to me, this is the, again, the ultimate culmination of partnership. Uh, it's the work of our local furniture manufacturers coming together and education partners coming together to create something special and something that's needed very much in this community. So we're very proud of it. It has been an endurance test. It's taken two years to get there, but I know uh, I'm certainly proud of it. I hope our furniture partners will be proud of it and certainly hope that it will benefit our community and the workforce in Caldwell County for years and years to come. So thank you so much for being here and being part of it. We look forward to, uh, again, a long partnership with all of you as we uh, work to train the furniture workers of tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, we are now going to cut the ribbon, what you've been waiting for. So I would like to invite all of our speakers and our uh, founding partners, our board of trustees folks to join us at the door and we will cut the ribbon and then as soon as we do that, we're going to, Jeff's going to lead us on a tour and we're going to see uh, the cutting machine in action. We're going to see some up upholstery going on in there and then we have lunch for you. So please stick around and, and join us for that. And uh, again, if everyone too would kind of move forward for pictures with the ribbon cutting, that would be great. College and Technical Institute's Furniture Factory Lab. Today we're going to walk through the three components of our Furniture Factory Lab, the cutting, sewing, and upholstery. I'm joined now by Brian Kimmer of Electra and Frida Parker, one of our instructors, and they're going to take us through our cutting machine, the Electra Victor IXM. Brian, take away. Thank you. First we're going to discuss the Formera software. What we do with Formaris, that is our patterning software where we go out, we design all of our pieces, whether you're bringing it in from an, another CAD station, AutoCAD, however you're doing it, or you're designing it directly in our software. And that's where you're gonna go out and select all of our motif points. Now what we do, and even a step beyond, is we do linking. So we link from our main motif to all of our component pieces, so all of our boxes and so on. That means that we have complete flow control. So besides flow control, so we're flowing all ways on the furniture, even if you're doing patterning on a jacket, we, are, we also follow all of our bows and skews. And we'll see that as we're running the machine. Here you can see our pattern and then all of our links. And we can even go as far as a half inch seam allowance or three eighths seam allowance, whatever it is. We're gonna close it right now and run the machine for you. The machine comes up and it tells us how much life is left on the blade so that the operator knows when the blade needs to be changed. So Frida's gonna run it and at this point here, we are now going to go out and select our motif. We selected the motif in the center. A very nice feature about our machine 
is that we can also select a photo point. You no longer have to go out and create second grids or anything in your patterning software or your marking software. So she selected that point because it's very visual and easy for the camera and a human to pick up on. We're now going to display our wefts. It's going to show us the width of the fabric, so we have our front edge, and it's going to show us the, the outer edge of the fabric so we know that we're fitting. You can hit it. And again. And now it's going to actually walk completely around and you can follow the camera. So everything is video assisted. There's no more bending down and looking at the red dot on the machine. So everything is ergonomic. You'll notice that this machine is running at a speed of 20. We slow it down because this is a school. In production environment, you're going to be running this machine 60 to 80 meters per minute. We're running at only a speed of 20. For the fact that this is a school, so we are here to teach, not to run production. Also, normally, we would have a barcode reader on this machine, so when you scan it, you scan your sheet, it will automatically populate your marker and all of your parameters. Now, we're not using that at the school because out in the real world, what will happen is if that barcode reader breaks, someone drops it and it breaks, the students that are coming out of this school are going to know how to actually run this machine manually and operate all those parameters. Right now, Frida's going to approve photos. So the machine took photos of the bowing and skewing. And as you can see, she's, taking the, she's teaching the software right now where all of the points are. And it now learned from her where the points are. That red check is our theoretical point, the cross. The blue means that the machine knows where it is. So we're going to hit the, the check box, which means she's validating. In production environment, you're going to put this machine in automatic mode. It's going to take the photos and validate automatically. Again, this being a school, we're not going to do that because we're here to teach. As the machine starts cutting, it's now going to follow all of our bowing and skewing. Any bows in the fabric, as you can see here, you have a slight bow in the fabric. The, fabric, the machine itself is going to follow all the bows and skews. We have a theoretical grid where the software was, but what we're looking for is the actual skewing of the fabric and the bowing of the fabric. When you're out, you can actually close that, Frida, and then take some, the rest of your photos, validate the rest of your photos. When you're cutting by hand, you have to take that pattern piece, your, your vanilla pattern piece, and run curves. Now we're going to do it all with the camera and with the machine automatically. This machine will also cut up the one inch compressed fabric. What we did is we cut a couple little foam pieces just to show you the thickness that we can cut and the intricacy that this machine can operate on. At this point, Jeff, can you take it from here? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Frida. Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute, the second component of our furniture factory lab is industrial sewing. We offer a 10-week industrial sewing course where students learn the basic skills and techniques necessary to obtain employment in a furniture factory setting. Brian Klutz is demonstrating some of the basic skills and techniques that we teach in our 10-week class. Traditionally, this class is taught in the evening. However, we are now offering a daytime option in cooperation with our adult high school and English second language students. If you'll now follow me over to the upholstery lab, we'll take a look at the third and final component of our furniture factory lab. Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute offers a 14-week upholstery class setting. In the, in the upholstery class, students again learn the basic techniques and skills necessary to obtain employment at local furniture factories. I have two of our instructors with us today, Mr. Dwayne Effler and Mr. Jim McQueen, and they are showing some of the basic skills and techniques that are taught in the upholstery class. Again, the class runs for 14 weeks. We start out with basic, taking a box, an upholstery box, and by the end of the 14 weeks, students are able to upholster chairs, couches, some of the basic skills and techniques that are necessary to obtain employment in our local institutes. Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute also has a partnership with Caldwell County Schools in which we're introducing a furniture academy. 
Students, high school students, will take our Furniture Academy class where they will learn all three components that we've discussed today, the cutting, the sewing, and the upholstery. Students will also learn in that semester long course soft skills as well as safety techniques that will be valuable for them in the workplace.